All right, let, why don't we get started now then, yeah. So welcome. Hope uh, you've been enjoying the summit. Yeah, yeah, yes, no, yeah, great. All right, so um, I work for Axnob, so I thought I'd put the front page title. The sales guy here would approve. I'm the techie, so there we go. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction about myself. So who am I? Um, software engineer, DevOps, architect. Been a Cassandra user since 2009. So I was one of the early adopters of Cassandra when I was working for Sky. Um, yeah, so um, I think that was the CTO at the time came to us and said, hey, you need to be active, active with your database. And we're like, um, you want to pay for some Oracle money? And, uh, and I thought, thought right, okay, let's uh, start uh, looking at this NoSQL. We didn't used to call them NoSQL at the time. Cassandra, MongoDB was coming out at the time, and we were testing them. We created a kind of a multi-DC environment using desktop machines in the office and plugging cables in and out and to test them. I was just gobsmacked as to how well Cassandra performed then. So I just kind of fell in love with the technology. So then I joined Datastax in 2013, left in 2016, um, set up my own company called Digitalis. Um, and then finally now Axonops. So um, Axonops is a Cassandra management tool that we built. So go check it out. Anyway, um, so I'm a, what am I going to talk about? So I'm, gonna, I'm a frugal person. I take great pride in eliminating waste wherever possible. I think it came from the times when I was little and my mum used to tell me like it takes 88 days to grow rice and I shouldn't waste any and kind of had a profound effect on me. And um, so any bits and bytes and CPU cycles, I hate waste, okay? It's just kind of, I'll tell you uh, uh, something about myself. My first job was at Citrix and um, I was working on the, uh, the Citrix protocol where you could have the full desktop desktop experience at 28.8 kilobit modem. And that kind of appealed to my sense of frugality at the time. Okay, so, um, and then a few years down the line, things like XML became prominent uh, protocol. And when I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, what is this, right? Um, and, uh, you know, it was meant to solve the problem of machine structured language over the wire, as well as being human readable. And I don't think it achieved either of them. So anyway, that's um, a little bit of background about myself. And I've got a guest speaker here today, uh, Joaquin Casares. Do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, sure. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, so my name is, uh, um, uh, is uh, it is Joaquin Casares. I typically stutter, especially on my name. So please bear with me. Um, yeah, uh, I'm a software engineer. I typically find myself in the infrastructure space just because I move uh, in, in, in the startup sort of realm and DevOps is kind of hard to find. So I do a lot of infrastructure stuff, a lot of performance. Um, I am a uh, DataStax employee number nine. Uh, that was a uh, very long time ago. Since then, been at the last pickle, been in uh, the Cassandra space, um, helping Humble improve uh, their workloads. They had hour long batches, drop those down to 18 minutes for them. Um, but yeah, uh, so currently I'm a Cassandra uh, a consultant, still in the Cassandra space. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to, to, to find me in the hallway. And back to Hayato. All right. So what we're going to be talking about today, so you saw the title, Scraping Your Cassandra Metrics the Right Way and the Dirty Way. Now, um, kind of had to choose a title that appealed to the sense of humor of uh, Patrick McFadden, who was doing the uh, selection of talks, uh, kind of came up with the title. But uh, I'm going to be talking about um, kind of something a little bit boring to this conference. Everyone's talking about AI and generative AI and things like that, really exciting stuff. And... I'm going to be talking something a little bit more boring, but hopefully you'll get something out of it. All right, so um, Cassandra Metrics. So you guys are here probably because you've probably been monitoring Cassandra at some point and collecting the Cassandra Metrics. Um, those of you who haven't, um, so Cassandra exposes metrics through J the JMX um, port, uh, through the mBeans. And it's out of the box, it generates over 20,000 metrics, or well, maybe even more these days, right? 
in Cassandra 4.1, Cassandra 5.0, they're producing a lot more metrics now. And that's a lot of metrics that uh, it exposes. And every table you add to the Cassandra database, it starts generating even more metrics. And after about you know, a couple of hundred um, tables you create, it starts generating well over 100,000 metrics. And that's a lot to collect. Now, you, those of you who have been in the, of, you know, the realm of operations and collecting metrics for Grafana, Prometheus, fairly kind of standard way of uh, you know, monitoring in Cassandra. Some of you may be using Datadog or um, other, other metrics collection mechanisms, but a lot of people using, have been using the standard JMX exporter. Yeah, and that is kind of the open source way of collection of metrics in your Cassandra database or other Java systems, right? And um, there are a number of other kind of Cassandra specific metrics collection mechanisms like MCAC from Datastax, um, InstaCluster created one as well, um, and uh, Criteo, um, it's a French kind of um, ad tech company. Now, these are fairly kind of standard common ones that uh, we see in the market. A lot of them expose the metrics through the Open Metrics API. So what that means is uh, the, the something like Prometheus has to kind of uh, fetch the metrics um, against the, the Cassandra database. Now, metrics collection can, collection can be expensive. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when you collect a large volume of metrics from Cassandra, you get um, quite a big CPU spike sometimes, yeah. Uh, and then occasionally, you know, if, you, if you've got a lot of uh, metrics to collect, it takes several seconds to collect per scrape. Now, collection of metrics from the database and having an impact, material impact on CPU is not great, right? Um, so this is why I thought I'd, um, you know, I'd talk about this. Now, at Axonops, we've, um, um, you know, as I said, I'm a frugal kind of guy. When I started looking at the CPU cycles being wasted from the collection of the, of the metrics, I was like, okay, got to do something about that. So we started looking into the JMX exporter at the time. This was about six, seven years ago now, as to why it was causing such a CPU spike on every single CPU, uh, collection of metrics. So... At each metrics collection iteration, so when so something like Prometheus hits that um, a, a open metrics port, right? What it um, so I was following the, the trace code. It actually uh, it create it does query the list of metrics through the JM export, right? So it gets the whole big list of MBs. Okay, so it's a big iterative kind of a for loop gets all the MBs and it creates the MBs objects and then filters out the ones you don't want. So you can actually filter out you know, the metrics MBs you don't want. So that's kind of an expensive iteration and it does that for every single collection. Yeah? So generating uh, objects, you know, when, when you've got hundreds of thousands of metrics, that's a really expensive thing to do. And then the next thing it does is, um, so, so yeah, as I said, it's a selection of metrics, sorry, but, I went a little bit too far in the previous slide. So it selects the ones you want, okay? And then starts invoking the, the, um, the scraping process. And then after that, each MB has a number of attributes. I don't know if you looked into the, um, the MB inside Cassandra, but um, for, for example, the table metrics, you might have uh, you know, throughput and then, um, or uh, latencies, and they have like 99th percentile max and minimum and uh, various percentiles, right? So the number of attributes in each MB, uh, so you have to iterate over those, so it has, creates a, a list of attributes. And then it has to iterate over those attributes so number of iterations going on here, very large volume uh, list of um, MBs, and in each MB you've got attributes, so iterating over those. And then it tries to get the value. Now, that kind of a 
process beam va value kind of method. This code, by the way, is uh, just a small snippet. It's not the full code from JMX exporter. Uh, so I'm not showing the entire code. It just doesn't fit in the screen. But yes, um, you know, you, you, it's a very big expensive method that gets called on trying to retrieve the attribute value. And then after that, Java, Comsun JMX interceptor, default mbean server interceptor.java. Every time you try to retrieve the, the value, it has to go through this permission check code inside the JDK. Right. And this also, we found that, you know, causes a number of CPU, CPU cycles to be consumed. So as you can imagine, if you're doing this for like 150,000 metrics, it's going to consume a lot of CPU cycles. Okay. And then after that, you finally get your value. Very, very expensive um, thing to do. And you, most enterprises, because of the expense, a lot of them are kind of collecting the metrics at every 30 seconds, every minute. That's a fairly standard kind of a collection cycle, right, or frequency. So I wanted more insight into Cassandra, more high resolution metrics, and uh, we decided to do something about this. So how did we make it more efficient? Now, those kind of huge iterations, yeah, querying the list of MBs and querying the list of attributes on each MB, we decided that's uh, probably the, one of the most expensive part of the collection, right? So we decided to build a Java agent, a bit like the one um, that JMX exporter provides or the MCAC, et cetera using ByteBuddy. So I don't know if anyone's used ByteBuddy, but um, it's a bytecode um, interceptor that you can manipulate the code dynamically inside your Java code, right? Now we um, used ByteBuddy to create a Java agent. And then what we did with that is that um, the metrics collection, we didn't want to create a big list of MB's objects every single iteration. So we pre-created that. Right, then we have the list of objects that's been pre-created for the list of MBs in the Java um, agent that we built. So we didn't need to go through the expensive process of creating those objects on every single iteration. That saves an enormous amount of CPU cycles. Okay. The next thing we did, we, we had to do is then, um, once we got, we create the objects and the attributes list created, then iterate over them to collect the metrics, right? And we are doing collection of uh, metrics every five seconds. And it's, you know, it's not that expensive to go over the pre-generated objects. So then we also iterate over the MB attributes uh, that's also pre-created, and then we get the attribute value. Now, because of the bytecode interceptor, right, we did a really dirty hack, and this is why I call the title dirty. We did the dirty hack of bypassing the permission check in the JDK. Really naughty, but it is effective in saving more CPU cycles, okay? So what that means is our agent is so efficient at collection of metrics that you barely kind of see the uh, performance impact of the collection of metrics from Cassandra, especially when you've got thousands, well, well over a thousand tables, okay? All right. So just to validate how uh, performant this is, we wanted to do a bit of a benchmarking comparison of the kind of impact the, uh, the metrics collection has. And uh, we kind of contacted our old friend, Joaquin Casares, uh, who is um, gonna give us a bit of a, uh, 
information about uh, his tests he's run done and the results. So, Mark Hin. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so um, uh, we went through, we ran this test on Cassandra uh, f uh, 4.1, which was uh, uh, the latest release at the time that we, we made sure it was a valid test, had all the new features. Um, you know, some features are a little bit, uh, 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 cost a little bit in performance, so we want to make sure that this is uh, as, as up to date as, as it was at the time. We're using Open JDK 11.02. Uh, we ran this on on uh, M7i large clusters, um, and for each of these um, tests, we did have three um, independent clusters uh, all running the exact same way. Uh, the only difference was we installed different agents. For one agent, we did, or for one cluster, we installed uh, the JMX exporter in agent mode to make it very similar to, to the other two tests. Uh, MCAC was already running in agent mode and we had the AXNOP agent. Um, these metrics were also collected every five seconds, which is a little bit different than Prometheus, which only collects um, every 30 seconds by default. And uh, we wanted to see uh, the load that um, the number of tables would create on our metrics um, uh, gathering. Because every table that gets created uh, comes with additional metrics, and these metrics uh, are hundreds of metrics, so this, this um, the metrics pool grows uh, really quickly. So in our uh, first chart here, um, when I was trying, was I figured, hey, let me start with 100 tables and see what sort of uh, load we got. And as you can see, AxNOPs, was, uh, our, our CPU spikes were, were, were fairly low. Um, we saw very quickly that the other two were, were pretty high, um, I went in and uh, ran that test for 200 nodes, or uh, sorry, for 200 tables, and we see the the, 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 the same sort of results. At 300, um, we couldn't run any more tests on JMX exporter, and I'll show you that slide in just a little bit. Um, and just for fun, I figured, you know, let me run AxNOPs at 1,000 uh, tables, see what, what sort of um, stats I get, and even then, we're running at about, you know, 33% a, a a CPU spike. So this is in 33% all the time, it just spikes up to 33. So when you look at uh, the CPU load average over the last 15 minutes, that's when, uh, when you see why I ended up stopping that test um, on the JMX exporter pretty early on, because we're already um, uh, have a very long queue of, of, of Cassandra processes that need to be processing that can't be processed because we're spending all that time on metrics. Um, and uh, formerly, uh, during my time in support, I would see times where we would have to turn off our metrics, turn off our logging, in order to have that cluster stay on. And that is a little bit counterintuitive because if there's an issue with the cluster, I need full visibility, not running blind so it could stay up. Um, so yeah, uh, MCAC lasted a little bit longer, uh, but as you can tell, it just it, it, it wasn't the, the, the same sort of uh, lightweight uh, model that the Axonops agent had. And um, at 1,000 tables, uh, we're running at 0.33% um, uh, of, of CPU load average over 15 minutes, so super, super light. So in order to do probably one of the uh, wonkiest comparisons I've ever done, I continued on with that, and these charts show Axonops table, or sorry, the Axonops cluster still had those 1,000 uh, 1, tables. I went in and dropped the tables for the MCAC uh, cluster and the JMX exporter to only 50 tables, uh, so that way it was a little bit uh, uh, more fair because uh, I wouldn't want to run a performance test on, on a cluster that's already un, um, under, uh, sorry, under provisioned. Uh, so as you can see here, even at 1,000 tables, AxNOPS is still uh, reading a lot faster. It's still writing a lot faster, too. Um, and in my mind, uh, the, these numbers, like, they're all kind of relative. You know, it's, it's on an, uh, on an uh, M7i large. So at the end of the day, what I'm really looking for is how fast did that job complete? So the, even with the AxNOPS agent monitoring 1,000 tables, we were still able to complete um, 1 million uh, rows, uh, writes and reads um, at half the time as the JMX exporter. Uh, the MCAC exporter is a little bit better because it does do uh, caching in the back, but we're still having to take a little bit of that hit because we have another caching layer that's, that's kind of affecting our, our, our processes. And um, another thing that, uh, that Axonops was, was really proud of is the ability to, to have everything be, uh, like, like, like Hi Alpha said, no waste. So I went ahead and looked on the wire to see what sort of information was being transferred off the machine. So um, even though MCAC uh, and the JMX exporter are only exporting metrics, and Axonops is also exporting logs at that time during all these writes, 
you can see that we had 700 uh, megabytes over the course of 24 hours being exported out to Axonopsis servers. Uh, MCAC, on the other hand, had 186 gigs being exported of just metrics. And that's because um, the uh, a, a, a Collect-D framework doesn't, um, doesn't uh, provide compression out of the box. There, there, there's no way to, to turn that on. And that's the sort of difference you're getting. Um, MCAC was a little bit better, but we're still, over the course of one day, transferring five gigs. So when you're looking at, at what sort of uh, capacity your, your Cassandra cluster can be doing uh, with the Axonops um, agent, we're, we're really running super, super slim, almost no impact to your cluster, but you are still getting five, uh, five second granularity on your data. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think um, you know um, we worked on the network protocol side of things um, uh, very hard as well to try and minimize the the, the bandwidth consumption. As you know, a lot of uh, you know um, public cloud vendors like to charge for bandwidth uh, utilization, especially cross AZ charges, uh, NATS charges, etc. We wanted to minimize the money that goes to Mr. Bezos's pocket. Uh, so um, I worked very hard to make that uh, as minimum as possible. Um, hopefully, we don't have any AWS people in the audience. Um, okay, good, good. Um, so, just kind of um, uh, final things, really. So, um, both um, MCAC and uh, JMX exporters model is to open a port on the Cassandra servers so that Prometheus can scrape. I don't really like that model of opening a port on the database uh, so that metrics can be collected. I prefer for the metrics to go outbound from uh, Cassandra servers or database servers in general, just an architectural consideration, uh, simply because if you configure your Prometheus wrongly, badly, you know, things can go wrong, it could absolutely hammer your um, metric, metric collection as well. So I just think that's not a great design in general. So we actually kind of go outbounds rather than uh, sort of open up uh, for collection purposes. As I said, network bandwidth utilization is a big consideration. Um, and also the frequency of the collection. So we were talking about, you know, most enterprises collecting the metrics like every 30 seconds or every minute, uh, simply because it causes a quite a bit of impact um, in terms of the collection or the network bandwidth utilizations. What that means is you see the chart on the, at the bottom. This is a chart of a five minute window. Um, so if you collect at every 30 seconds, you see the chart that um, is on the left hand side. Right, and um, what we do is collection of the metrics every five seconds, so you get a much more kind of clarity. It's like putting my glasses on um, to, to, you know, and, and being able to actually see um, what's going on with your servers, even at like you know uh, these small time range, right? So um, that kind of gives me a um, good insight into how Cassandra behaves because sometimes the clients come in and create a spike. But if you're only collecting every 30 seconds, you, those spikes get smoothed out. Um, the way the way you do the say throughput uh, is that Cassandra is incrementing the uh, read counts, and then you are applying a rate function against the counts on the timestamps, right? So then you know if you're kind of uh, collecting every 30 seconds, then those spikes disappear in the charts. Yeah. So. This is why I you know, honestly believe that collection at much higher uh, intervals is important. Um, and uh, that's what we've uh, implemented. So um, I think my clock is telling me 29 minutes, 33 seconds. So um, it's time. But uh, thank you. And, um, and do take a look at Axnops. And um, yeah. Um, if you've got any questions, more than happy to answer them. I've got my email address on there, um, and you've got some QR codes for uh, your uh, uh, Axonox links. So thank you. Questions? creation of MB, so, so uh, object creation is quite expensive in Java, so when, you, when you've got hundreds of thousands of them, yes, it's a, a very expensive process on every iteration of uh, metrics collection, so yes, that's a, a big one. But, um, you know, I keep pursuing for 
more CPU cycle saves. So <laughs> it's one of them uh, law of uh, the whatever returns. It's called m yeah, more spend, more time you spend, less you get rid back. But I just push it as far as possible. Yeah, diminishing returns, that's the one. <laughs> yes? What was the use of doing the breaking? The security side of things? So um, in terms of the um, uh, jumping over that security, it's because we're kind of you know, intercepting the Java by code, and it is, we, it is a very well-known uh, tested code. So there, it, and nobody has access to our code to be able to invoke anything. So, uh, so we determined that was uh, safe enough. Well, it's just a permissions check. Um, so it's not um, like an authentication as such. I, th I think if you're doing the um, JMX, um, if you're hitting the JMX port, with a username and password side of things, it then checks that. But because we've got a Java agent, uh, there is no kind of authentication anyway. So that's um, that's what it is really. Yeah. Uh, yes. So we've been doing this for Kafka as well, exactly the same. So when you've got lots and lots of topics, it generates enormous volume of metrics, and we have found exactly the same, even though it's, uh, it's in Scala and stuff, but yes, it works on Kafka. <laughs> yes? How do we make it uh, so small in terms of the bandwidth? Um, let's just say we're not using ASCII text like open metrics, um, where it's, you have enormous uh, text describing each metric. Okay, Hope, hopefully that makes sense. All good? Excellent, well thank you for coming. <laughs>